Y'all, I got to do something about this series dilemma right here. And I got to do it today. What up? It's I from Ask Out Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. And this ain't simple. This ain't it. This is my series connection going into my EB120. But because it's in series, that panel right there is not producing any power. Series treats them as one panel. And I might as well just have one panel. So that's what I'm going to do today. And then you may ask, what am I going to do with this other panel? Well, keep watching. Keep watching. So I finally remembered to actually bring the tools that I need to possibly get these things apart. Every time I come out here to disconnect MC4s, I forget this and I forget my knife. Sometimes I got to cut a little bit off of the MC4 plug just to get it out of there, which is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. One down. This is what I just realized, though. Look at that prime spot but then the sun goes away because it ends up over here so this is good for like a couple hours and though i don't mind moving my panels i don't want to move them all day i want to have them like here and then here and then back here it's just it's 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 a, it's a lot it's a lot i may still end up actually moving them but moving one panel is better than trying to move two so now this one's coming off now What's gonna happen with this one is I'm gonna put it on the bull bat. The bull bat, I've been thinking for some time. Let me let me reposition because I have this 100 watt HQST and then I have this 100 watt Renergy down here that's actually hooked into the bull bat. The bull bat can take in 160 watts of solar. These panels typically put out about that much. They can put out more obviously because they're 190 watt panels. But I was gonna put this one in parallel with that one to get it 200 watts of potential input basically over paneling it to produce the 160 if sun is ideal right but because i'm taking these apart i'm just gonna put the 190 on the bull bat and then it'll bang out you know what i mean one important note that i forgot to make is that i'm looking into 400 watt panels because i want a beastie panel but i want one panel to move around here for my eb120 if you know the eb120 can take in up to 65 volts 68 if i go off of what Todd parker um found so i'm really interested in that but until then you know what i mean if you can see here this is a mess of cables i don't know if you can see that so basically these are my two leads going to the eb70 right so red and black and what i did was i put extensions in between a panel so that they're not so close because when you put a panel in parallel or series Without an extension cable, they're usually right next to each other. So this mess of cables kind of got on my nerves too. <laughs> EB120 cable going into this panel right here, which is going to crush it on the sun. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> well, let's get it going. This is what the EB120 is producing. So I'm getting 154 from this. All right, so now we have this hooked up. Just disconnect it and we'll see what kind of power this is pulling. The bull bat is pulling 131. Ramp up and ramp down. Interesting. We're going to have to keep testing on that one. So the final result is two panels independently producing power. So even though I'm shading this one like a weirdo, the EB120 is still getting power. And that's just how I'm going to have to rock. If I ever get sent an EB55 by Blue Eddy <laughs> or something bigger, that's what's gonna replace the bull bat. So I holla. Oh.